looks like we're wrong <laughs> we're liars cool awesome slowly uh fine-tuning this uh live streaming format i checked the sound a little bit beforehand make sure everything's okay hopefully the sound's coming out okay and uh what we'll do we'll uh, as usual we'll wait a couple of minutes um give people about five minutes before we begin usually i have this little sign hi everyone we'll begin shortly Good evening to you, brother. Belgium, good evening, good evening. It's good afternoon uh, here, 12 noon. Hi, Chicho. Mm -hmm. Sam Davy, 22. Wilson's here. X is here. <laughs> so, Lord, right on, brother. Fun. We got, uh, so we got Europe. Um, Lord is Belgium. Wilson, I believe, is Ireland. Uh, I don't know. There's some, uh, we got some European, UK. Christian Sun 93 Neon Complex. Hello from the UK. A couple of UK. Hello, Chicho. Haria 23. Oh, I can see it better uh, right now. And the text is showing up. Cool. So it looks like everything's working fine. Thanks for popping down, guys. Uh, we're going to make some food. <laughs> I got a lot of things prepared here. So. Uh, is the sound coming out okay? I hope the sound's coming out okay. Uh, I didn't do a last minute headphone check. Okay. So what do we got? We're in two minutes in. Uh, like I said, we'll give everyone about five minutes before we, be, we begin. And um, what I'll do is, uh, let me give you lay of the land before we start off. Sound is great, fantastic. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing good, man. We're about to cook some food, uh, make some delicious food that I, that I like a lot. This is uh, some food that I eat a lot um, because it's, for me, as far as I'm concerned, it's good for me. Uh, I like it. And um, once you make this food, what we're about to make today, you can, it lasts anywhere between two to three days. So you put the time in at the beginning, front end loaded, you do a little bit of work, make food and you're set to go for about three days or so sound is fine how are you doing good good so uh let me give you the lay of the land uh, before we begin because i've prepped uh prepped some stuff already i've washed some things right but let me tell you how everything's set up and this is going to be basically the the way we're gonna set up everything when we're shooting this way when we're shooting the other way you know we'll do a couple more before i figure out uh the setup but basically computer camera here uh microphone here okay and apologies still i haven't figured out how to deal with the sound the humming of the computer um i'll probably i'll need to do a little upgrade get some get a tablet or something like that that doesn't do fan and doesn't work too hard and put the computer further away and stuff like that but i'll figure that out and uh, the other thing we have set up here is check it out oh, no last second oh my uh for some reason i'm not seeing the text coming up i think it's popping up oh i'm hungry chicho you're hungry also <laughs> oh, fun and uh, what else we got set up here is i got the two cameras set up here that are going to shoot these two elements because we're going to use both elements okay i have basically the food set up here let me turn this off the camera's off still because we're not getting going on there yet and let me take off start shortly because we're basically beginning Doop. and this one if you if you lose the main pick um it will come back up i might be accidentally clicking it on and off okay and i have a fair bit of green set up here now before we begin what we need to do is um caught a stream chicho awesome awesome nice to have you here tink 10 johnny andrews here too cool, cool so what we need to do is uh, get some water heated up because we're gonna make some rice okay and I'm basically here I'll put it out here so you see oops let me turn on this camera 
So this is how much water I'm putting in. And I'm not gonna kick it up to high. I'm not gonna boil it. I don't usually boil uh, water to make rice, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna kick it up to high temperature and then bring it down to about medium. Uh, so we can get, you know, when we lift it up, you'll see where there's a little bubble forming and then we're gonna put the rice in, okay? So let me just kick it up a little bit. And what I've already done, I've done some prep work. So let me run you through the prep, what I've done so far. I've already rinsed the rice, okay? You can see it's fairly clear water. Hopefully you can see it. Let me show it to you here. It's fairly clear water, okay? And you can actually soak rice overnight. I haven't soaked this one overnight. I rinsed it this morning just to get it clean. But what I want to do is I want to show you, I got some fresh rice here, right? This is half a cup. What we're going to make is one cup. Okay. Let me show you um, what it looks like if you don't rinse rice. You really want to rinse rice before you cook it up. Okay. So this is basically just the rice by itself, right? And this is what it looks like when you put, put the water in, right? And if you start twirling this, the water gets cloudier and cloudier, right? And I basically rinse water, uh, rinse the rice. Um, this one that I rinsed this morning, I went through about f five to six rinses. So I keep on doing this because it picks up the dust particles and wherever the rice has been, right? And you just pour the water out. And you do it again you fill it up you fill it up and you keep on doing this until i usually do it until i get to about oops let me bring it over this way you can see this is the one we're going to use and this is the one that's cloudy right so it takes me about five or six rinses to get the rice clean okay and we're not, we're not going to use this one so i'm just going to give it a little bit of water give it a rinse put the spoon back and put this guy on the side here what we're gonna do is cook that up later okay what's up chicho what's up chat case my yo it's my hey man <laughs> doing good man doing good man um so we got the rice already rinsed up right and what happens when you rinse rice overnight when you make it when you cook it up the grains actually become a little bit longer so you get a better yield to a certain degree right and what I'll do I'm gonna do the quick rice cook right now so we've got the water going we're gonna get the rice going because rice is gonna take the longest amount of time to do so I want it to be ready to make our you know one of the dishes and you do eat rice with the uh, with the second dish that we're making as well Chicho chef is making dinner <laughs> making lunch for myself dinner for you guys for sure um, and one other thing I want to mention is for the previous uh, couple of cooking live streams we did, I had the recipes, you know, already set up. So we were, we were popping up on screen. But what we're going to do for this cook, we're going to write the write the recipe for the dish that we're going to the two dishes that we're going to make on this thing. Because what I do with both of these dishes, because we end up using a lot of greens and it's per taste, what I feel like having at the moment. I end up cutting up the greens depending on what I feel like. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to show you the different types of greens that I use. And we're going to make a sort of a little ratio. So it's sort of a little bit of mathematics, a little bit of ASMR math creeping in there. Uh, hopefully the humming doesn't make it non-ASMR, the humming of the computer. But, you know, it'll be mathematics sort of creeping in there the way we did with our tea, right? And I usually always, always have tea going when I'm uh, doing a cook. Okay. And this one, tea with a little bit of lemon. As uh, Caseman984 says, fantastic. The food is fantastic and the tea with lemon is fantastic. Okay. So what do we need to do? The water is heating up slowly. We're going to put the rice in. What I want to do right now is chop up the greens. Okay. Now I've already done a wash for the greens. I did that yesterday. It takes about, for the amount of greens that I washed, it takes me about an hour 
45 minutes, half an hour to an hour, depending how slow, how fast I'm going, you know, taking a chill, relaxed, just washing the greens. So it took me about 45 minutes last night just to wash the greens. And when washing the greens, you know, you get bunches of greens, I tear off the ends, right? So there's a little bit at the ends that I tear off. Here, let me show you. Oh, this one is. And uh, for the previous cook that we did, uh, I mentioned that I keep my greens in a rag like this, right? And someone mentioned that this was a really good idea to keep the greens, and it is a fantastic idea. The greens stay fairly fresh. Here, let me take down the, this angle right here for now until we get the water going. So the greens stay very fresh, but sometimes if I want to keep the life going on going on them a little bit longer because like this in the rag they they'll stay fresh in the fridge for minimum two to three days pushing four days but if i want to extend that longer i just take the rag and put it in plastic okay and that extended to about five or six days usually four or five six days or so depending how often i'm getting in there right so what we're going to do is let me show you these greens and i usually don't separate the greens i wash things together and I mix them up and I keep it in a rag and you know when we're eating we sort of just lay it on the table and just eat it raw and raw greens is absolutely amazing right so let me just show you this okay Oops, sorry about the sound last time we did the cook I made a little bit too much sound uh, some people were mentioning it wasn't uh, AS you know part to ASMR we'll, we'll we'll figure that out slowly right but take a look at this this is, let me put this out here. Let me turn on the camera over here. Okay, so these are the greens. You just unwrap it, right? And what I've done, I have parsley on this side and I have Italian parsley on this side over here, right? And what I do, I usually cut off about this much from the ends and compost that, right? And then what I do, I take the greens, put them in a bowl like this a fairly big bowl spray a little bit of salt on it pour water on top and let it soak depending on the type of green like parsley and parsley you can let soak for a while italian parsley less dill a lot less right so depending on the green i let them soak anywhere between 5 to 15 minutes or so and then i take them out and i dry them using i i rinse them and then i dry them using the spinner right and then i put the stuff in racks okay and what we're going to do, we're going to, we're not going to cut up all of this. We're going to cut off parts of this, right? I'm going to write down the ratio of approximately what it is, the mix that we're using for the greens. Okay. Hi, Chicho. These cooking streams are my favorite. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying them. Double Elvis, Elvis, Elvis. Thank you for popping by. Um, the water, I'm going to kick up a little bit, get the heat going on a little bit more. Because again, the rice is going to take a little bit of time to cook. Okay. So we're going to chop up the greens, but before we chop up the greens, I want to show you something um, because I had breakfast a while ago and I am hungry, so I don't mind eating and cooking at the same time. So I'm going to make myself a little snack, and this is a little snack that has been a part of our repertoire forever since I was a little kid. And I mentioned this uh, a while ago where I mentioned that... Um, with our family, we did a farmer's market one year where we brought up a lot of recipes uh, and we made, a, it was basically a vegetarian table we had set up. We had pastries and vegetarian set up, uh, vegetarian dishes we had set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through that menu that we had and we used to sell out of certain things, right? And what I'm about to show you is something that we used to sell out of. And it's a quick little sandwich you can make that is absolutely delicious, okay? Um, it's always super healthy stuff. When is it going to make uh, pie and chips? Actually, I do make homemade chips. And I, I don't make pie, but I do make different types of pastry. And a little snack. Yes, most definitely. So let me show you this little snack we're about to have. Okay. And you need flat bread, pita bread for this. Or, you know, in, in Iran, you sort of call it... Um, uh, lavash in, in Farsi. I forget what the name is in uh, in Arabic. But basically, this is because I've moved to a new town and my access to different types of flatbread has really 
diminished. So there's only a couple of different types of flatbread I can get here. And this is one of them. This is a fairly large one. And with pita bread, what you can do, they usually cook it and there's two layers to it. And you can usually just pull out, you know, separate the two layers. We're only gonna use one little layer. And this stuff is, for me, my body likes this. For some people, I realize that uh, they may not like uh, the white bread, but we're using very little of it, okay? So as a quick snack, and this is something, again, we used to make this before we did the farmer's market, take it to our table, and this is something we basically sold out of every week, okay? What you need for this is a little bit of feta cheese, and the feta cheese we end up using is uh, uh, creamy feta cheese. You can use any type of feta cheese you like, but because we're gonna use a lot of greens. It's nice to have a little bit of creaminess and creaminess in there with all the raw greens we're about to eat, right? So what I do, here's a feta cheese. I'm gonna take this one, this guy, and take this guy as well. Might as well make it nice and feta -y, right? So let's put in this here. And just squish it down, right? It's just a paste on top of the bread and one thing this feta cheese is salty and with greens with veggies and stuff in general saltiness is good it tastes really good squish it down uh lavage yes yes chicho is a <laughs> fun jack of a trades so we got our feta all laid out and what i'm gonna do I'm gonna take some I should because I have my microphone set up here I shouldn't be talking over there so I'll try to keep this in mind so the sound comes out okay I'm gonna take some Italian parsley right lay it out take some parsley straight up parsley lay it out okay We're basically going to make a feta veggie wrap and you can add walnuts to this as well. And we usually had it with and without walnuts because some people are allergic to nuts and stuff, right? So let me close this guy up. Let's bring over. I believe this is the cilantro. show you this as well Take a look. this is cilantro and I usually don't put oops I had a little spillage I usually don't put a napkin in there I just did it so it would separate for the cook today right so I'm gonna take a little bit of cilantro put it in there right take a little bit of dill right? Throw it in there, right? And I'm not gonna put in any green onions. Sometimes we put in green onions, but not today. I don't wanna put in any green onions today. So close this up. And having in the, in the rag, it helps you sort of manage the greens, right? Usually I don't do spillages. So we got the greens here. Okay, now you can have this just like this. You roll it up, okay, and it tastes absolutely fantastic. You don't need anything else in this, okay. I think Starbucks makes a wrap kind of like this, and I get it all the time. Oh, they do, I don't know, I don't, I don't really go to Starbucks uh, very much. Okay, take a look at this. Let's put the rice in there, since this is all steamy. So let me turn on the camera for this we leave the sandwich alone until we get the rice going okay so the water is steaming here let me put the lid on so you can see the steam coming up in one shot right there's a the steam and it's not boiling yet so I'm gonna kick the temperature of uh, this element the water element I'm gonna kick it a little bit less than medium 
Okay, and again, these elements are fairly, they burn heavy, right? So I'm gonna put it on three. On a scale of one to nine, I'm putting it on a three, okay? And what I'm gonna do with the rice, okay? Now I'm gonna get rid of this water that's in here right now. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna pour the rice in there. Now be careful, the pot, the water in the pot is hot, right? So don't put your hand in the water. Okay. And rice, usually, when you're doing this, you know, it sticks to all the side and stuff, and it's difficult to get it out. But all you need to do is grab a, scoop up a little water from this, and twirl this stuff around. And again, be careful with this, because the water is hot, right? You just do this a couple of times, and you should be able to get all the rice grains. Okay. All right. It all comes out easy peasy. Let's put this guy. I don't think we're going to need this guy. Let's put this guy. Put that guy away. Right. Make some room. I'm pretty crowded in here right now. A lot of things going on. Right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump a little bit of water out of this. Right now, I don't know if you can see this. The rice is sitting at the bottom of the pot and there is about this much. So this much rice and about this much water on top. I'm going to reduce that a little bit. Okay. Just going to pour it out. Because we don't need that much. We're going to do this. And when I'm cooking rice, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a little gap on the edge of the, the pot. Because when you put it on, it's... It's okay, but you gotta really stay on top of it because what happens with rice, it starts foaming up and it'll spill over, it'll just make a mess. It's not hard to clean, but it makes a mess, it goes on an element like this and you gotta clean the element. So it does create a little bit of mess, it's not a big deal, but I'd rather not have that happen. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap and slowly what happens with the gap as well, the water, water evaporates. So your water reduces and it, I sort of found a nice little harmony between me and my rice making where this is sort of what I do. And this is the quick way. Um, at some point, I'll show you guys how to make Persian rice with that little crispy thing at the bottom. It's called tadik. You put bread in there or potatoes in there and it crisps up. It's really good. Um, I'll show you guys that another time. This is sort of the first step of before making Persian rice, but we're not gonna rinse, rinse it and bake it in the oven afterwards. We're gonna put it on the element and cook it there, okay? So, rice is done. Let's go back to our sa sandwich, right? So we got the greens, you can roll it up like this, but what you can do is, here's some walnuts, right? Delicious walnuts. And you can just line this up. I put about a quarter, just line it up along this thing, right? And walnuts and greens go amazing together, really. They're fantastic. Now, sometimes I load this up with a lot of walnuts. Right now, I'm sort of staying away from nuts in general. I've reduced my walnut almond intake a lot. Uh, but for this, I'm gonna add walnuts and have a few bites, okay? So, you can see it here. Let me see if you can check it out, right? Just line it up like that, and I roll this up, right? And this squishes really well. And this pita bread is uh, is a little bit crumbly, okay? So you have your pita wrapped up like this. You can just put pressure on it and, you know, put something on top and just hold it like that if you don't want it to de-roll. Or you can roll it up in plastic if you want to keep it. What we used to do, we just rolled it up in plastic and had, had it, uh, or saran wrap and had it for people available there, right? And all you do is just take a bite, right? And keep the pressure, stay there. <laughs> Very good. Now, 
I'm going to take bites of that every now and then. And just a warning, when you're eating greens like this in sandwiches or whatnot, the odds are you're going to get little green bits in your mouth, right? So apologies if I have uh, some green sticking to my teeth. If you see it, I'll whoosh around after we take a couple of bites and my tummy feels good and I've energized myself a little bit, right? But if you're eating this outside after you finish eating, for sure, check a mirror or take a sip of something and whoosh your mouth around, right? Whoosh the water in your mouth because you don't want to be walking around with <laughs> little bits of parsley and cilantro all over your teeth, right? So what we're going to do right now is we're going to chop up the greens for the dish that we're going to make, right? The cuckoo dish, the Persian uh, sort of dish that every Persian household has. They eat. Okay, everyone does. I've never met anyone that doesn't eat cuckoo. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of greens, right? And what I want to do, I'm going to bring up the bigger cutting tray because greens take up a fair bit of space. So I'm going to... We're gonna, um, what should we call it? Just use up the space, right? And when you have it, the pot like this, water condenses on the on the lid and sort of spills over every now and then, just drops over, and the and the element goes like this, right? So keep an eye on it. Okay, you don't want it coming up. This won't come up right now. It'll take a little bit of time for it to come up, and I'm gonna leave it on three. Okay. So let's just change this up. Bring the bigger guy here. Okay. Now, as I said before, the way I make this is I make it according to according to um, the type of greens I have available and what I feel like having. Right. So to make this, what we're gonna do, we're gonna write down the recipe. We're gonna create a recipe right now. Some say that if you, if one was to stroke the beard of a one, go on, Chicho, one would be endowed with a culinary <laughs> mathematical wisdom. That's funny. That's awesome. Um, let me take a little sip. Fun stuff. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna make our recipe as we create this dish okay and what we're gonna do because i'm not gonna weigh the greens right we'll weigh it maybe afterwards i have a little um scale here that all the greens in there we might be able to get a weight but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it uh, use how much dill we're gonna use as our standard unit right in mathematics what happens is as i've said before mathematicians are are pretty lazy that's the whole concept the whole purpose of mathematics is to take things and understand them as best as you can as as simply as you can right to simplify things we talked a little bit about this in the trigonometry playlist trigonometry stuff that we created but i sort of use that perspective in the way i deal with food in the kitchen. Really, I try to optimize things as best as I can, right? So what we're gonna do to create this recipe right now, we're gonna use the amount of dill and cilantro. We're gonna use the same amount of, actually no, we're gonna use a little bit more cilantro. So we're gonna use the lowest green, the green that we're gonna use the least of as our standard one unit, and we're gonna compare everything to that one unit, right? And at the end, we'll try to get a weight for it. I don't know if my scale is good enough to get a weight for it, okay? so. Let's bring this here. Let's take a look at the dill. Okay. Let's assume we're going to put about this much dill into what we're about to do. And what we're going to do is take all of the greens and chop them up, put them in a bowl and mix it up with eggs and a little bit of flour and cook that up, right? So this is how much dill we're going to use. We're going to call that one unit. And I'm going to use just to give you a comparison, I should do this like this so you see it side by side. And I'm gonna call this two units, okay? So one unit dill, one unit cilantro. Okay, let's add this in there. 
I'll bring this up to the big monitor as well. So hopefully that shows up. And he transported into a graphic novel. <laughs> Fun. So let's let's see what I approximately. Hopefully this shows up better. On yeah, let me turn off the water monitor, the water camera, so you get a feel for what it is that we're using. One unit, two units. Okay, so let's write this down. So for our cuckoo recipe, right? Cuckoo. I think they also spell it K U K U. Okay. Does that show up, everyone? I hope that shows up okay. I should put on my glasses. Let's see if that shows up okay. I think so. I think so. So what we did, we call him Dill, and I'm just gonna call this D. Okay. We're gonna call this one unit, and cilantro, we're gonna call two units. Okay. One and two. Cool. Now, we're gonna throw in some green onions as well. Okay, nice green onions, that much green onions. And we're gonna call this one unit, okay. One unit of green onions. Could be one and a half, but we'll just say one unit. Green onions, some people like, some people don't like, okay. And that's green onions. And I don't need these guys anymore, right? I'm just gonna put it on the side. I like to clear, uh, when I'm cooking, and I like to clear my workspace as I'm going, okay? Good evening, Chicho. Uh, good afternoon uh, from my end. Good evening to you, Loki. Let's do these greens. Okay, let's do these guys. Parsley and Italian parsley. Okay, now I'm gonna move these guys over a little bit in the bottom here. Let's do, these are nice greens. I just picked them up like three days ago. This much parsley, mm -hmm. how much is that? We'll lift it up and try to see, figure it out. Ooh. And Italian parsley, We'll do this much. Let's see. That's the parsley and that's the Italian parsley. It's fun, uh, the fun making a recipe as we're going. Okay. So let me put the green onions and the cilantro to one side. Let's just put this up here. We'll bring it back as soon as we figure out what the ratio is for the parsley and the Italian parsley. Check this out. Okay, this was our one unit. And I would say parsley is two and a half times that. And same with the Italian parsley. So let's say two and a half for each one of those. Okay. So 2.5. Oh yeah, green onions. We put green onions, how much green onions? I think that was just one unit, right? And we've got parsley, and we're gonna call that 2.5 units. And we've got Italian parsley, let's call that 2.5 units. Units being relative to the cilantro, right? So we got these guys, let's put these guys on the side as well. We'll come back to this, okay. Let's throw this over here. Let's put this guy over here. Now, one of the main ingredients for this dish is lettuce. Okay. Now, all the other veggies, greens, it's too taste. I know some people can't handle cilantro. We used to make the sandwich that we made that we put cilantro in there. There used to be at the farmer's market where we had the table. I didn't know this, but people used to come up to us and say, do you have this without cilantro? And we're like, 
why not cilantro i you know i personally love the taste of cilantro but for some people i think cilantro they explained it to me that there's some chemical in there that uh when they eat it cilantro makes things taste like soap which i found very interesting very interesting right so we used to make the sandwiches without cilantro as well because there were people that you know came there that wanted it without cilantro so law all the other all the greens up to you what you want to use lettuce is something that's basically a hundred people of the hundred percent of the people that make cuckoo use lettuce as well majority of people anyway that I've, that I've known okay and as far as the lettuce goes we're gonna use a fair bit okay because what lettuce does lettuce make lettuce when we cook it up it makes this cuckoo dish become fluffy okay it becomes a lot fluffier so let's use this that much sure let's use that much actually let's add a little bit more that much okay let's put that there and let's check the rice make sure it's not coming up check this out here let me pull up the thing here's the rice so far right it sucked up a lot of the water and the rice is it's coming above water now right so we're gonna let this cook still and we didn't get that foam coming up if you had the lid on this would have already spilt over like it would have the foam would have come and would have, would have gone messy all over it right so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna open up the gap for this a little bit more actually you know what i'm just gonna leave the lid off and let this curcle away a little bit and get the water evaporating okay I'm in the soap camp. Oh, it tastes like soap to you, the cilantro. I think it's similar to how grapefruit can change the taste of anything it touches. Oh, okay. Okay. I, did, I never associated with grapefruit because you can't really eat grapefruit after you brush your teeth. It tastes like weird, right? So I guess it's sort of a, that type of taste. Okay. And this is, we'll let this cook up a little bit. And what I'm going to do. I'm gonna chop up the greens before we start off with the next segment of the rice dish, okay? Because I need this to evaporate a little bit. So when I'm cutting up the greens, this is all I do, okay? And what we're gonna do later on, I'm gonna introduce a little bit of mushrooms in the recipe as well, but uh, hopefully we'll remember. Let me put this up here so I remember that if I don't remember the mushroom part, Please make a little comment and let me know about the mushrooms when, once we start doing the green stuff, okay? But right now, my deal is, I wanna chop this up. Let's see if we can chop it up all together. All right. So this is all the greens we're using. It's this much, all right? I could possibly use more, but I don't wanna make, um, because we've got two elements, usually I make enough to have two elements going at the same time with the cuckoo stuff, right? So this is how much greens we have, right? Let me hold this up, right? This is what we're using. And the ratio is this guy right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna chop it up and then we'll try to weigh it, okay? We might actually just do it with cups. So, yeah, sorry, I'm gonna have to chop here. If I was left-handed, I would chop on this side, but I'm not. So that's one round going one direction and then
you want to do is chop it up nicely. Do any of our exes ever appear in your dreams? <laughs> My tummy is growling. That reminds me, I want to take another bite of the sandwich. Okay. Now this is good enough for now. It'll be more crunchier this way. If you chop it up more, it'll be less crunchy, more smooth when we make it. It's sort of like a like a foam, you know, thick thing like this. And check out the rice. Let me show you the rice. The water is slowly evaporating, right? And the rice flakes are sort of standing up to a certain degree, right? And that's exactly what you want. And what we could do right now is you could take this and pour through a little one of these guys. One of these things, right? And I, we will be doing this. Okay. And what you would do, and then once you put the rice in that thing, uh, what you do is run cold water over it. And what it does, it sort of gets rid of the the stickiness to, of the rice, a fair bit of it actually, right? And that way the rice is more crumbly, they're flaking instead of being sticky like um, uh, Japanese style, like uh, when they make sushi, right? It becomes a lot flakier. So let me see how I do that. What I do, I usually taste the rice just to see if it's reached that stage, right? Not bad. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kick the rice down. I turn it off anyway, this element. And it's still got a little bit of water in there, right? So. Here's the bottom of the pan, or the pot, right? The rice is in there. And the way you get that out is you run water and whoosh it around. And then pour it on top of the rice. Okay. And just rinse. So I just rinsed the rice a little bit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, we could make Persian style right now. All you gotta do is just take a, a little pan or one of those glass things and you can either do it on the stove or you can do it in the oven right uh, what we're gonna do i'm just gonna pour it back in here okay take a look at this there's a little bit of stuff stuck on there but that's okay what i'm gonna do is give the rice a little here let me show you. i don't know if you can see it but let's turn this off for now I'm just giving this a little bit of shake, right? But be careful with rice because it is, it is fragile. Okay, you don't wanna squish rice around. Once it's reached, you don't wanna, I should be talking here because the microphone is here or the mic is here, yeah. Um, you don't wanna be squishing around the rice too much because it is gentle when, once it reaches this stage. So what are we gonna do is put this on here. Now I can put the lid on it. Here, let me show you this. So just put the lid, rice on the element, put the lid on it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch up. Let's put this guy here. I'm gonna switch up the rice to another element because once we get the greens going, we're gonna start working on the rice dish. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn on the element that's up here, which is on a smaller element. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna put that on a two. Really low. Oops, that's the wrong one. I want this one. I'm gonna put it on two and a half or so, okay? And I'm gonna let that heat up a little bit. And pretty soon what I'm going to do, I'm gonna add olive oil around the side of the rice and let it sit on the element. And the longer you leave it on there, 
the longer you give the rice the opportunity to become crispy on the bottom of the pot right and usually making rice crispy takes a fair bit of time i don't know why rice takes so long to become crispy maybe because it's sucked in a lot of moisture but and you can't put it on too high a temperature because you can burn it right so i usually do it on low heat or medium sometimes medium if i'm on top of it otherwise it'll if you forget about it, you might burn it, right? So I'm gonna put it on, let's say three and a half, three and a half out of nine, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna deal with the greens. Let's do a little bit of green transfer here. Okay, I'm gonna bring this over. Right, let's do this. There we go, lift this up. And obviously you would never do this cutting and whatnot on the stove top. I'm just doing it because this is the space we got, right? Oh, I should have weighed the the thing beforehand. Get a get get it zero before we add the greens on there, right? That's what we should do. Long time since I've gone into the chemistry lab, right? We need to standardize it first. So let's put this back. Let's bring out a little spoon. I don't want to make too much noise because this microphone is super sensitive, right? So let's do this. And let's zero this. Okay. So let's bring this down. Let's see if this is going to work. And then we'll do it with cups as well instead of pouring it on. So let's see what this guy says. I got a little scale here. Take a look. Little this guy. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on it and zero this thing. And then whatever greens we add, that's the weight of the greens, right? So let's put this on here. Let's put this on here. So this thing weighs. Let's put on our glasses. This thing weighs da, 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 eight ounces. What is that? That's about 350 grams. Okay. So this thing weighs about 350 grams. I'm going to level zero this. Okay. Here's zero. So if I lift this up, you should be able to see the scale on it see the measurement going on the negative side it's not it's not very accurate it was actually around 320 on the positive side so on the negative side maybe it's not as accurate okay. if I put this on it should be well, let's move it around a little bit let's zero it from here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count this with cups as well that way we have two different measurement systems for a recipe, depending on how people want to use it. Okay. This is our one cup measurement cup thing. So let's see what we got. One full cup, all right, <laughs> overflowing. There's one. Like full on cups, right? Overflowing cups. Let me put this closer. That's two cups. That's three cups. That's too much overflowing. That's four cups. Let me turn off this. The scale is some serious. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't do this when I cook for myself. I go by sight. What it feels like. What I feel like having. Right. Oh man, how many did we have? Was that four cups? I lost track. Dude, I'm so. <laughs> oh, if you were close by, you could come over for lunch. Uh, I don't know that, how many that was. Was that four cups? Is this five cups now? I hope someone kept track. Let's assume this is five cups now. If I'm wrong, please let me know. Okay. Five cups. Let's see. 
six cups. Okay, someone said it was four cups. Perfect. Six cups. We got. Do we want to do six and a half cups? Okay. Take a look at this. This is like three quarters of a cup. Because we overflew the other ones, so that was six cups. Let's call this seven cups. So we got seven cups of greens. Okay. And the weight on this is 400 grams. Cool. Seven cups. So total. Total. Is going to be seven cups or 400 grams. Right. Okay. So we're using four cups. Uh, seven cups of greens with this ratio or 400 grams of greens with this ratio and the way we can figure out how much of each green maybe cilantro italian parsley lettuce or whatever we used what we can do is total these up as a ratio right so the total of this is one three four four and a half make it five and the two twos make it nine right so we have a total of chicho I'm glad i could catch this stream ah glad to have you here brother glad to have you here man hopefully the game is going well right so we have nine cups nine units total for the greens right so ratio the ratio would be nine units total for the greens hopefully that shows up and then dill would be one over nine Cilantro would be two over nine, right? So this would be the unit, unit of the green, right? Green unit, let's call it. Green unit. And if you multiply this by either seven cups or 400 grams, right? You end up getting, you could either go this way or this way, right? This isn't a, a fraction. Maybe I shouldn't have written it that way, right? So you multiply by either four cups or 400 grams and you would have the amount of your greens maybe later on we'll do the mathematics of this lay it out properly uh, so no one gets confused but this is basically what you're doing so if you were doing the dill you would go one over nine nine times seven cups so you're using seven ninth of a cup of dill for the ratio that i'm using you could use anything you want all right you could just use one unit of or just use lettuce if you want right and add a little bit of flavoring in there or whatnot okay so this is our green let's put this over here and clean up the mess a little bit of mess we made here okay let me put the scale away let's put this guy back up here so let's add it away. Do we need the knife? We do need the knife for the mushrooms that's gonna come up. If this is a math video now, Chicho needs to grab his glasses to make him official. I had it on a while ago. So let me just get rid of these guys. Get rid of the little bit of mess we made. That way we're not going to burn anything on the element and whatnot, right? So, what we're going to do now is... Hot? Not hot. Check the elements before I put stuff on. Right, let me put this on here. So, Walter White of Cooking Food. <laughs> I gotta love Breaking Bad, gotta love Breaking Bad, right? So what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna add flour to this, okay? And we're gonna add salt. And again, this is, the salt is per taste, whatever you want it to be. Some, I've had this recipe, this, this dish in different people's houses, and they all taste different, really. Lot, some people add a lot of salt, some people add very little salt. For me, I think I'm on the little side. Okay, so I'm going to add, oh, here, let me show you how much I'm adding. So I'm going to add, mm, I'm going to add 
two of these guys okay so you get a scale factor right. okay I guess this is two teaspoons one on the shy side a little bit less than two maybe okay I'm just adding two now what you need to add for this now is flour and the flour changes your recipe a lot are you going to enable donations on twitch in the future you should look into it i already have donations i think i have donations enabled you got the gift hub in there and the get bits so if, uh, i'm i'm not sure what else i'm supposed to do elvis uh double elvis just commented that if i'm gonna enable donations as far as i know they're enabled i don't know if i need to do anything else if i do please let me know and i'll take care of it for sure it would be appreciated 100 percent for sure right um so we got this going and what we're gonna do is if you want if you want to donate you could check out his patreon patreon for sure as well okay so we got the greens here we're gonna add flour okay so let me put this guy here and let me take a bite out of the out of the sandwich cheese There's some stuff going on Twitch that I haven't seen before. 10 for donations, I don't know. I'm not sure how this stuff works, so if it's donations, thank you very much. Um, I do like the Twitch experience, but there's a lot going on, a lot going on. <laughs> now we need emotes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add flour. And let me show you how much flour I add, but I'm gonna add a little bit less than that because I wanna play around with it. I'm gonna show you what you can do with the mushrooms as well. You can add the mushrooms in there. So the way this is gonna work, I usually, I don't even measure. I usually pour in from the bag of flour that we have, but this is our flour, okay? And this is another cup thing that I have. The other one is all greeny, so I have two, so I never mix the different things together. So let's see how much we're gonna add. Here's one, approximately one cup, right? And the more flour you add, the drier the dish becomes. So if you add less flour, it's very squishy. It's like greens cooked up, they shrink down a lot. When you add more flour, it sucks up the juices and it becomes a little bit puffier and a little bit harder right usually i end up making mine on the hard side and i don't use that much oil because when i'm eating this dish at other people's homes they use a lot of oil and it's um it's more squishy okay so what we're gonna do is let me do this let's add one cup of flour here okay and i'm gonna mix all this up by the way right so one cup one cup enough let's add one and a quarter here's a quarter part okay quarter mm. no let's just add one okay usually i make mine uh, with more flour okay also chicho live for everyone who who subs to you you receive half of the cost oh okay i didn't know that so it costs 4.99 to sub you get half of it which twitch the other half oh, okay I didn't know that that's cool um, so we got this the only other thing we need to add to this there was two things one of them is a little bit of baking soda so here's our baking soda and very little baking soda not very much right but I do have little tea teaspoon 
measuring things, but I never use them. So I'm adding about this much baking soda, take a look. Right. And I call that like a quarter teaspoon or something like this. And we need eggs in this. So let's do this. Let's add to our recipe. We add one cup flour, and I use the organic whole wheat flour, but you can basically use any type of flour you want, right? One cup flour. A quarter teaspoon baking soda, a quarter teaspoon baking soda. This is messy. Right. Quarter teaspoon baking soda. Right. And this is the way I usually make my recipes. Whenever I'm cooking something new, I'm trying to perfect the recipe. This is basically what I do, but I do it on a piece of paper. Right. I sit there and I modify things a little bit and I taste it and I scribble stuff out and I add more stuff, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add eggs. Now I'm not absolutely sure how much eggs we're gonna add, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna take this guy. Apologies about the sound. Okay. I'm just gonna make this mix mix this up a little bit. Okay. And that's good actually. That's how much flour I wanted in there, right? So if you can tell, the flour sort of surrounds the greens. Right? And the smell of fresh greens, wow, wow, wow. It's amazing. It's fantastic, the smell of fresh greens. Bits are okay and subscribing as well. But Twitch does take a big chunk of those. So let's do, let's put this guy here. Get rid of this guy. Now we need to break some eggs. We need to break some eggs. Mm -hmm. We're gonna use this guy. Okay, and we're gonna scramble the eggs. Okay. This guy's a little dirty. A little dirty, why is this guy a little dirty? You know what? Let's do it in this. Let's put it. I'm just gonna use the bowl that we had the, the rice in, right? That's clean. So, here's the eggs. Okay. I think we're gonna put about eight eggs in there. So it takes a fair bit of eggs. So, yes. And you can just break them in the bowl and mix it up afterwards. You don't have to put it in this bowl, but I'm doing this because I don't want any egg shells to fall into the into the in with the greens right that's four that's five that's six that's seven is that enough let's do eight why not Good protein. And again, I always rinse my hands after playing around with eggs, touching the eggs. Fresh veggies smell amazing. I used to work in the produce section in a grocery store, and it was great. Yeah, fresh veggies is absolutely fantastic. Nothing like it, nothing like it. Your body just craves it. Here's the here's the egg, so we got eight eggs, right? So let me throw this in there. I could mix it up in there or mix it up with the greens, it doesn't make a difference. So we got eight eggs. Let's add that to our recipe. Eight eggs. And they're, uh, the eggs are sort of medium small, right? So eight eggs. Eggs, let's call them medium. 
maybe we'll, after we finish, we'll flip this over and write it down properly, the recipe. Right? So what we're going to do now is just mix this stuff up. I might add more eggs, depending on how, there's sort of a texture that I'm looking for, for the greens to be in, right? Because I want the egg is a good binding. The eggs and the flour as well, they're good for binding. And it reduces in size a lot, right? Yeah, that was a lot of eggs. We could have maybe made it six eggs instead of eight eggs. Okay. Are you a vegetarian? Sure. No, I'm not a vegetarian. Uh, someone asked me this before, um, but I do love veggies. I think veggies, if you don't eat veggies, I think you're pretty much screwed later in life. You need veggies, right? I know a lot of people that don't eat veggies. I'm like, how could you not eat veggies, right? Um, but I do eat meat. Uh, specifically, majority of the meat that I eat is uh, red meat anyway, is a lamb. Okay, I like cooking with lamb, and I'll share some lamb recipes with you guys for sure. Uh, but I have reduced my meat intake a lot over the years. Okay, so this is the texture we have, right? What I can do is I can make this more solid by adding more flour I could add probably another quarter of a cup of flour and it'll give it more volume and it'll make it less squishy okay because this is more on the squishier side so this was eight eggs eight eggs we could have maybe even put six eggs in there if you wanted to right so what I'm gonna do I am gonna add I'm gonna take half of this well we'll see how much we end up using this might yeah, I don't think I'll fill up one of the pots that I have. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, oops, apologies about the sound, microphone, very, very sensitive. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add another quarter of a cup of flour. Okay. Let's see. Take a look. Is that a quarter cup? That's not even a quarter cup. That's like 20% flour. Right. Is that a quarter? I gotta put on my. <laughs> what is this? Two hundred fifty. That's like fifty grams. Yeah, let's say twenty percent more flour or quarter cup more flour. Okay. Let's mix this up and see where it goes. So instead of having, where is it? Um, one cup flour. We're putting one point two five. So kill this, 1.25, okay? Let's mix this up. Just a little bit more volume. Okay, cool. So let's do this. Let's put this guy here. Let's get rid of this guy. Now what we're going to do, we are, let me give this guy a little white. Now we're going to start using the elements. Now let's do this. Bring this guy over here. We don't need this guy. I'm going to put this guy over here. Let's turn on the cameras. Okay, so we've got one guy here. And let me bring this guy. Trying not to make too much banging noises. Hope I'm not too late for the stream. No, we're about, to, uh, well, we've done a lot of the prep stuff. We're about to start doing the cook, right? Let me do a little peek on the rice as well. Let's kick up the temperature on the rice. This element in the back is not as strong as the front elements. And it's reached the level where what I'm going to do here, let me show you this. Take a look at the rice, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put olive oil around it. So let me show you what I'm, how that's going to be. 
I just free pour usually okay so hopefully you can see here let's put it over here so you see and a little bit over there okay a lot of people put butter and what I'm gonna do is kick up the temperature on that I'm just gonna swish this around so the olive oil sort of spreads to the bottom of the pot okay and we're gonna put the lid back on it and what I'm gonna do right now is I'm kicking up the temperature to to about four and a half out of nine for the rice okay now let's kick this up okay and we're gonna make the rice dish here the sweet rice dish and we're gonna make the green dish here and what I'm going to do is let me put this one on low okay and I'm gonna use olive oil I'm not gonna use initially I was gonna use some coconut oil but I think I'm just gonna use olive oil for both of them okay that's for the rice dish that's how much oil for the green I'm gonna use more oil greens really suck up oil okay the more oil you use the greasier the dish becomes now this isn't very much oil that I've used the greens are just gonna suck this up very quick okay so let's kick this up now this element is super hot okay it's like a turbo boil it's got like turbo thing on it and stuff so I'm gonna put this on you know get it going to around three and a half but I really have to watch this element because it tends to burn so I'm gonna put it on three and a half for now let the oil heat up I'm gonna kick this up this one I'm kicking this up to about four let's put it on four until we're ready now for your rice dish what I want to do is I'm gonna use dates I'm gonna wash these a little bit I usually give my dates a rinse the dates and we have to deep pit the the what do you call it the dates right so let me just put this on top of here I'm gonna kick the turbo one down a little bit since I'm working on the element I don't want it to get too hot so all I'm gonna do is just get rid of the pits I'm not sure how many I'm going to use yet. Like fairly quickly, we can make the rice dish once we start on this. But what I'm going to do before we put everything in, I'm going to get the green one going because the green one takes a little bit longer uh, to cook. Okay. Because we do have to cook the greens and stuff, right? dates have we got so far no, I'm gonna use more dates are amazing they're powerful they're good for you so good for you lots of iron affordable what I've been told it keeps you regular <laughs> dates. dates okay that's good enough I'm gonna get rid of these guys put them in the compost Should we measure this? Let's measure it. We're making a recipe, might as well measure it. Let's see, this is half a cup <laughs> overflowing. Half a cup overflowing, right? Squish it down, half a cup? Sure, half a cup. So let's write down our rice recipe. Okay, hi Chicho, managed to make it again these early afternoon times are nice for the UK. Ah, oh, glad to have you here, brother. Uh, am I late? No. Well, you're halfway through. We're halfway through. So, half a cup of dates. Okay. So we have rice. Rice is, this is for the rice dish. We're gonna have rice. We haven't decided how much rice we're gonna put in there. We're putting half a cup of dates, right? Half cup dates. Oop, 
What are we going to put this in? Let's put this in here. Let's not make too much noise. So half a cup of dates. We're going to use, you can use cranberries or raisins. Okay. Right now I'm using cranberries. I have raisins here as well. I might mix it up. Let's do Let's call that a quarter cup cranberries. And let's put some raisins in there too. Okay. And let's say a quarter cup of raisins. Okay. Sure, quarter cup of raisins. Okay. So quarter cup cranberries, where is it? Quarter cup cranberries, berries, and the quarter cup raisins. Quarter cup raisins. Apologies if I'm spelling things incorrectly. My spelling is not the best. Okay. So we got this ready for the rice dish to go. We're not going to start it yet. We're going to get the greens going first. Okay, because the greens take a while. So the oil, if as you can tell, hopefully you can see this, is swishing around nicely. I'm gonna kick up the temperature a little bit because I wanna get the oil hot enough so when I put the greens in there, it sizzles, okay? Not too much, but it sizzles so it seals the boundary to a certain degree, right? And we do need a lid for this dish, okay? We can just leave the lid here for now. And depending on, here's the greens, right? I can even add more flour to this. This is usually in general more squishier than I, I make it, okay? But it's still gonna be fantastic. Let's put this here for now. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of the rippling effect. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here. Take a look. Okay. And I'm gonna to try to take half of this, maybe more, and put it in there. And hopefully it makes a nice sizzling sound. Let's kick this up to four. this much greens left take a look and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use that with mushrooms I'm gonna add mushrooms to it we're gonna make another pot with mushroom another pan with mushrooms in it, and a little bit of greens right so we're gonna put that on top and we're gonna kick the temperature down to about three and a half on this one It's super hot what is the combo with veg I missed the first part we'll go over it we wrote it down we're sort of generating the recipe because it's sort of just by feel the way I make it we're going to translate this to another page I'll, uh, as soon as we get the stuff going, okay? So what we're going to do now is, since that's going, I'm going to, I'm going to kick the turbo down, the green recipe, down to a three. Okay. Now, let's cook the rice dish. The rice dish, I'm going to kick up the temperature. Actually, I'm kicking this one up to three and a half again. Hopefully it doesn't burn, I gotta check it. This element is crazy hot. Okay, let's kick this up. And the rice, let's check the rice. Perfect, and the rice is nicely steaming, that's what you want, okay. Let's check this. You can see it sizzling, yep, perfect. We got this going. So what I'm gonna do is the dates, the cranberries and the raisins, I'm gonna dump in here, 
Okay. Cool. We also need <coughs> cinnamon in this. So, and again, cinnamon I usually just free pour, but let's do a little measuring. Let's do this guy. And for this recipe, the rice recipe, you can throw in walnuts in there as well. I'm not gonna throw it in, okay? So walnuts, you could probably throw half a cup in there or something, okay? Or more, depending on your taste. So that's like, like look. This much cinnamon, about three quarters of a cup, okay? Or three quarters of a, uh, of a, tea, uh, of a tablespoon, right? Quarters of a tablespoon. You could add more. I might add more later. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I need this guy. And I'm going to add a little bit of more oil to this. Okay. They are fantastic in certain dishes. That's just a dish we do have that burnt greens and it's pretty delicious with it. But we'll hold off on playing around with that. So what I'm gonna do is, if you can see, I'm lifting this up and it still needs to be solidified a little bit more, but I'm checking to make sure it's not burning at the bottom of it. So I'm gonna kick this down. Now I'm, this, this element makes me nervous. So what I'm going to do, let's put the disc guy to one side, give ourselves a little bit more room, and let's bring this guy here. Let's make sure we're not burning things up. Perfect. Okay. So once you get it to a level where it's you can see sort of sticking together, right? What you can do is cut it. So let's bring this out. This guy cooking away, right? And this one I've kicked up to a little bit above halfway now, the rice dish, the raisins and the dates and stuff, right? And this guy, what I'm gonna do is, Cut it into slices. And what you're gonna do is try to flip this. Okay. <laughs> sometimes it flips easily, sometimes it doesn't. I think I had the temperature a little bit too high, right, at first. So I got a feeling the bottom of these are a little bit burnt. So usually you wanna cook it at a little bit less of a speed, right? This is what we got, and we're gonna flip it. No, not bad, not bad. That's exactly what you want, and I'm gonna kick it down to a lower temperature. I'm putting this, the greens down to a two now, okay? Yes. Nice feel to them, nice look to them. And once you flip it, once you flip it, you leave the lid off. You don't put the lid on this again, okay? Now what you're gonna do is, cook this up, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to this, okay? Nice. What you can do is add a little bit more oil to this as well if you want. Just pour it down the middle, let it spread out from the middle out, right? Hopefully anyway. And we got this down to a two. 
we got this guy. And you know this guy is basically ready when you see the rice dish, this sweet rice dish that we're making. You know this is ready for the rice to be put in there. Once you start seeing a little bit of a blackening on the dates, on the skin of the dates, and you see the raisins become a little bit puffier, right? They heat up and they become puffier and the cranberries get a little bit of blackened look on either side and stuff. So this is getting pretty close. Here's one of the raisins or one of the cranberries. Take a look at this. It's like balled up, right? Hopefully you can see that. Oh, it just lost this puffiness. And this dish is basically done. What we're going to do now is we're going to grab rice. Let's do it with the other thing. So what I'm going to do now is just use this spoon, take rice and put it in here and mix it all up. Okay. Let's put this guy here. All right. And I'm not going to dig into the rice. I move it over, but... I don't want to mess with things, so I'm not going to dig into the rice. I'm skimming it from the top and I'm pouring this in. And what I'm going to do is this guy here, we're going to kick down to a two now or even a one. Okay. I'm not sure how many spoonfuls I put this up to you, how much you want. Okay. I didn't count it. We could. And what you could do now is you can turn this off. This guy, the rice dish. While we're doing this, let's check these guys, make sure they're not burning. No, perfect. Yep. Okay, let me show you these guys. So I'm gonna move this guy off the element. I'm gonna make sure the metal handle is not sitting on top of the element that I might burn myself, right, reaching for it. And we've got this element turned off now. Okay. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab a plate. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Okay. I'm going to move this off the element. I'm going to kick the turbo down to messiness. A little bit lower. Take a look at this. Bring it up. Right. On this side. Right. And you can take, take a look. It is cooked up. And on this side, the first side you cooked it on is darker, more solidified, right? More flat. Take a look. Here's this guy. Nice. Here's this guy. Nice. There's this guy. Right? Just on the verge of, they're not getting burnt, but they're dark enough. They're cooked. And this is what we got. Okay, you can scrape these off. Here, let's put this guy. Let's put this guy on top of here. Let me take care of this first because what we're going to do is we're going to add mushrooms in these. I should have chopped up the mushrooms earlier. Okay, I didn't even lift this. Let's put this guy here. And let's use a spoon. Let's leave this guy here for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add mushrooms to the rest of the greens that we have. These guys, okay? And I'm gonna make another pan of this green dish. And you'll see what that looks like with the mushrooms added. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna do the cutting on top of here. This is a big no-no, by the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't do this. What? This is mushrooms I've already, I've already cooked up, right? Let's put this here. I don't want to do too much. Not too much heat will be gathered up. This is fairly quick. So I'm going to cut these up. Okay. I'm gonna kick down now. Let's see if it's it's getting crispy. Maybe it's not gonna get crispy. I've left it open too long. Okay. So I'm gonna actually I'm gonna turn off the rice. I'll show you guys how to make Persian uh, Persian rice in another another video video. This is sort of like the quick version of making the half version of making Persian rice. So again, per taste, right? if you like lots of mushrooms, I made this dish with just mushrooms, this pan dish that we're making, which is basically just use mushrooms, flowers, eggs, and a little bit of baking soda, and you do exactly the same thing as what we did, but it's just a mushroom little quiche style thing. Right? And once we get this going, we'll uh, taste the food. So that was like six mushrooms, medium-sized mushrooms, right? Let's take this, actually let's measure it for the cup. So that's one, <laughs> let's measure it accurately. That's one cup, right? There you go. That's one cup, I'm adding it to the greens. And let's see if we can get two cups out of this. So we got two cups of chopped up mushrooms. Right? Here's a second cup. Let's throw that in there. Cool. Perfect. That's that. That's a bit of that guy there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this ready, ready to go. So I'm gonna add oil into this. More oil. And these pans, they're fantastic, the cast iron stuff. And I'm gonna kick up the temperature. It's cooled down a fair bit, so I'm gonna kick it up to around a three. While that's heating up, I'm gonna mix this up. Take a look. So this is the mushrooms, right? That's the mushroom. That's the mushrooms. So we're gonna mix that up. How many people will that be enough for? Uh, one very hungry Chicho. <laughs> In general, you can give uh, one of those cuts, uh, what do you call it, the squares, per person, right? Usually, uh, wherever you go, they cut these into eight. I just put them into quadrants, four, four pieces, but you can give one or two. But in general, one of these is good for one meal. And you do eat that um, with yogurt as well, and I'll show you, and with rice. It goes really good with rice. Hey, hey, I made it to the stream. Easy, zany, man, 64. Welcome, welcome to the stream. So take a look at this. Now this was two cups of mushrooms, so the ratio is way more if you go back to this, to this thing, right? Because initially we had this. These were the numbers we used for the whole thing. Now we added two whole cups to about a quarter of what we had here, right? A quarter of this would be 100 grams, 100 grams of mixed greens, right? And then two cups of mushrooms, right? So once you standardize things, or you standardize it to the dill ratio, then it becomes a lot easier to manipulate. 
Hey, I can cheer you now. Nice. Thanks for the cheer. <laughs> so take a look at this. So we got this guy, right? And this guy, the oil, is a little hotter. So let me put this back. So I'm just going to put this back on the rest, close it up. We're going to do this, make sure the oil is everywhere, right? It's nice and liquid. And what we're going to do is, this is nicely mixed up. Right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring a little spatula. Get rid of that guy, get that guy. And I'm going to pour this in there. Right? And we're going to squish it down, and then we're going to put the lid on it. And this, once you make this, this, this dish is called cuckoo in Farsi. Okay. This can stay in the fridge. Like when I make this, we usually eat it for at least two, three, sometimes four days if I make a lot. Right? Now I didn't increase the salt content in the dish. You can if you want. Maybe I should have tasted what we made so far to make sure the salt level was good. Right? So that's that. Let's get this here. Let's put the lid on this. Put the lid on it. And I'm going to kick it down to about three. Okay. I want the mushrooms to cook nicely. Testing for badge. Testing for badge. I don't know what the badge is. Okay. Now, take a look at this. This is our rice dish. Right? It's going to be nice and sweet. And what you can do with this now, if you want, if you want to make it crispy a little bit, you can flatten this out and put oil, just put a little bit of oil and let it be crispy in the bottom. I, you know, I don't mess around with it too much when, when it's like this because dates burn really easy, right? And I don't want to deal with burnt dates uh, because I like the way they are, right? So let's take a look. Let's have a little taste of this. You can add salt to this as well. In general, I don't use salt very much. I really don't. I use the minimum amount of salt, right? So take a look. All right, so let's have a little taste. Very good. Like one of the most soothing dishes that I make. One of the most soothing dishes that I eat. I love this dish, this rice dish, okay? And the cinnamon, the cinnamon taste is amazing. Okay, enough eating for me for now. That's our rice dish, that's done. Cool, second place, <laughs> nice. Hey Chicho, I arrived to the stream late. What kind of rice is that? Long grain, white, jasmine, or something different? It's... Um, let me read it. Hold on. Uh, it's basmati rice. Okay, and in general, I use basmati, but I do switch it up. Uh, that's the reason I had to check because, uh, oops, sorry about the sound. Um, because I do like switching it up every now and then, right? So this is basmati rice, rinsed, soaked, uh, soaked, rinsed, actually rinsed five times to get the water clear, and then. Uh, I let it soak for a couple hours at least usually when I'm cooking rice. Sometimes I do it overnight because it gives a volume, increases the volume. Okay, so this guy is done. Let's take a look at this guy. No, it's not solidified yet. Right? I don't want to, you don't want to risk flipping it when it's not stuck together nicely. Right? So let's turn that down. Let's leave that there. While this is cooking, um, actually, let me show you how we prepare the dish usually for this cuckoo. Take a look. Let me grab another fork. I 
I got someone at the door. I have no idea who it is. I'm not expecting anyone. Take a look at this. This is the dish we made. I'll be right back. I'm gonna check the door. I don't know what it is. It might be a delivery or something. I doubt it. Maybe if they knock again. It is raining, so hopefully they didn't leave anything on the on the thing. So let me go check it just in case, okay? Just in case. Look at these randoms, <laughs> crazy. Can't tell what he's saying over the food cooking. Good, good, some must have smelt the cuckoo. Yeah, they must have smelt the cuckoo. <laughs> look, look at this. Here, we gotta put this, I'm pretty sure now. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's good. Here, we'll do a flip on this and let it cook and then I'll show you the rest of this, right? So, again, I just cut it into four. Some people cut this into eight right away on the pan. It's easier to flip as well when you do it that way, right? Let's do the flips. This and this. Let's check it out. And the mushrooms in general is a little bit more delicate. and crispy. Look at that one. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we want. Right. Maybe knock on the door was good. It delayed me from flipping these so it became a little bit crispier. Nice. Okay. So we're not going to put the lid on it anymore, right? So the lid we don't need. And let me show you a cook a little bit. This is the cuckoo, so I'm going to take one of these. Basically, one dish that we give to people or people have in general, right? So we're going to take a cuckoo. We're going to put it down. Right? And usually there's white rice with the dish. So I'm going to put some white rice on the side. And we'll put some of our sweet rice as well. Okay. Let's see if I can get some crispiness out of the rice. Let's put this out. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Nice. Take a look at this. This is how the rice looks like. If you add a little bit of olive oil on the bottom and just put it on low and let the pot heat it up a little bit, right, at the bottom. So here's this guy, right? A little bit of crispy rice with a little bit of white rice. All right, you got the cuckoo here. Let's put that there. Let's put this back. I'm gonna add a little bit of sweet rice because we just made it and it's delicious. Oop, here's a little bit of sweet rice. Right. Throw this in. A little bit more sweet rice, I like it. And usually there is yogurt accompanying the cuckoo. So I'm gonna put a little bit of yogurt here. Okay, let me grab the yogurt. Do have uh, usually there's meat or fish and stuff with this as well. So let's put a little bit of yogurt here. And here's a little bit of yogurt. And usually there's salad. Okay, I have two rice dishes going, rice things going right now. Usually we don't have two, but one of these would be salad, some kind of salad with tomatoes in there and stuff like that. So it's 
um, you know, you got a lot of greens in this, in the cuckoo, but you're gonna have some fresh greens not cooked as well, right? So what we do is, you know, you can cut it up. Here, let me do it here, right? Just cut up a little piece and dip it in the yogurt, right? And munch away. Let's check it out. And it doesn't have to be with yogurt. You can just eat it separate. And it tastes great. All right? You can just eat it separately by itself. You can use, eat it with rice. All right? It's a fantastic dish. Very healthy in general, right? Let's check out this one. Make sure we're not going to burn it. Ooh, getting crispy. So, let's bring this guy. And what you can do with these guys, you can stack them, right? With these guys, you leave a little space between so there's air flowing. And I will cut these in half later when I put them in the into like storage containers so we can put them in the fridge. So I do reduce the size of these to about half of them. So I cut them in half. And this is getting a little bit burnt, so I'm just gonna take these off. Right. That's that, they get like, that's cuckoo. Let's move this over. Oh, sorry about the sound. Sorry about the sound. That was a loud bang, bang, right? So here is the cuckoo. So let's turn off this camera. We're not gonna need it anymore. Right? Yeah, that's that. Everything turned off and I still have my tea going, which is really nice. There's some comments. Wish I was there. It's very tasty, man. I wish I've cooked enough to feed, like what we've cooked here, this with the rice dish, and we would definitely have a salad on the side. We usually have a salad on the side. You could easily fit, feed like, you know, four or five people or six people on this. For us, for me, for two people, it would, this will last us three days, easy, right? And we're gonna cut these in half and then, once they cool down, you you line them up here. Let me show you how you do this. So I just cut the top one in half, okay? So all you do when you're storing them into containers, you just put them sideways, stack them up like this, after they cool, obviously. After they cool, you stack them up like this, you put them in the fridge, and whenever you want, you can take them out and, uh, and munch on them, right? And what happens is, um, if you end up making them really dry, let me turn off this camera as well, the rice dish. If you end up making them really dry as well, then what you can do is when you're heating them up, take the pan, right, put the, Put the cuckoo, like two or three of them that you want to eat, on the side and pour a little bit of water, like really just a little bit of water in the side of the pan, right? Put the lid on it and the water rehydrates the cuckoo if you've ended up making them dry. If you make it oily, you don't really need to worry about that. But usually in general with me, I, sometimes I ended up adding a lot of flour. I make them really dry, thicker. And then what I do, what we've done a couple of times is once they're cooled down, uh, they're they're hard right they're they're tough so we cut them in half so end that you end up getting thinner slices of cuckoo we put them in the pot right and then we put cheese on it and then put a little bit of water right and then put the lid on it and the heat and you don't put it on high heat you put it on you know a little bit low heat and the water evaporates and the the greens the cuckoo just sucks up the water and the cheese slowly like melts a little bit right not not broil but just sort of blends in with the greens and you eat it like a like a pizza slice like it's a cuckoo pizza slice with cheese on top it's fantastic it's really good seriously yogurt is essential yogurt is essential yogurt is fantastic eat the stuff four times a day <laughs> 
<laughs> sometimes sometimes what is the dish called again it's called cuckoo sometimes they spell it k-o-o-k-o-o -O -K -O -O or k-u-k-u okay and we'll write down the recipe i'm just going to read a couple more comments that were posted which green can you taste the most in there mm, let me check let me check in in general cilantro comes up The crunchiness is from the lettuce okay that's one reason people add lettuce in there because it gives it a crunchy feel as far as which greens you can taste more the dill you can definitely taste okay it's not overwhelming so the ratio is really good The dill you can taste, the lettuce you can feel, you can hear. Mm -hmm. How long could they last within a week, would you say? Would you spread them out for say a daily lunch or work? For sure, whenever I make these, minimum, minimum, uh, we eat it for is like three days right because you don't want to just eat that you need some other stuff as well so you're not just munching on the cuckoo like just this for three days you're eating you know you're eating rice you're eating salad if you have some kind of meat dish on the side you're eating some kind of meat dish or whatever it is that you're eating right so this in general stays in the fridge for us um, this will stay there for four days three four days okay maybe five days if we if we all of a sudden decided to munch on something else. Okay. Green, can you taste? Da, 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 da. Wish I was there. Feels tasty, man. Okay, cool. So uh, I think I read most of the comments. I don't know. Uh, but let's do, write down the recipe uh, a little bit more accurately. That way we have it as well. And, um, and it'll be in the stream. Sorry about not having it posted up, but this is sort of something that I do by feel. It's not something that I follow a recipe for, which is the way I usually, most of my cooking, I don't usually follow a recipe. I just do by feel. There are things that I know how to do. I've done enough that uh, I feel comfortable with it, okay? So the rice one we know. The rice one was one cup of rice, but I didn't use the whole cup, so. It'd be about half a cup of rice. Okay. So rice, let's say half a cup. Half a cup. Okay. Half a cup of dates. Quarter cup of cranberries. Quarter cup of raisins. And I think we put in, anybody remember how many spoonfuls of uh, cinnamon we put in there? I think we put one tablespoon, possibly. It might be two. So we'll have to check the video. But one table spoon cinnamon okay i have no idea how to spell cinnamon sin s-i-n-n -N, i'm pretty sure but the rest of it who knows right so let me bring this a little bit closer maybe that way we can do it let's see let's see let's see let's see let's see let me move it cool let's do this so that's better i think right so that's the rice dish, sweet rice dish, right? As for the cuckoo, the green dish, let's write this out. So we have this dill, cilantro, green onions, parsley, and Italian parsley, right? So let me, let's write this out properly. Cuckoo. Cuckoo. So we have dill, dill, cilantro, green onions, parsley, and Italian parsley. And we also had da, 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 uh, flour, but we'll deal with the flour. Let's write down the numbers. 
cinnamon. Oh, let's write this down. Cinnamon. S i n n a m n n a m o n. Cinnamon. Thank you. Thank you, Wilson. Uh, could you sub the cranberries for anything? Not a big fan of the flavor. Yeah, for sure. You could just use all raisins, right? So instead of a lot of people don't use cranberries, I just use cranberries, right? I don't think I've uh, no within our family some a couple of the people have used cranberries. I think that's the reason I was able to learn to use cranberries. But most people use just raisins. So you would use half a cup of dates and half a cup of raisins, one to one ratio, right? So so for sure, I know a lot of people don't like cranberries, right? Cinnamon is essential though. You do need cinnamon and you do need to add oil every now and then when you're making this thing, right? So as far as the cooker goes, we got one, two, one, two and a half, two and a half. One, two, one, two point five and two point five, right? The ratio, everything relative to dill is one unit dill, two units cilantro, one unit green onions, two and a half units parsley, two and a half units uh Italian parsley and tell me we wrote down the lettuce oh we didn't write down the lettuce did we guys lettuce lettuce did we green total seven so it's not nine this is what happens when I write down recipes right we forgot about the lettuce so the lettuce was a fair bit it included the cups, seven cups total. Well, it's not seven cups total, is it? Total seven cups. Oh, this was, uh, da, da, da. oh, everything came out to seven cups of chopped up, right? So nine was these guys added up, but we didn't include the lettuce. So what would you guys say? Uh, this is the best stream I've seen in a long time. Very interesting. Oh, <laughs> thanks, brother. Cooking is uh, always a pleasure, right? So what would you guys say the lettuce was, the amount of lettuce we used? I would say at least four times the dill, right? So I'm going to add lettuce in there. I'm going to put four. Um, you know what? Let's make it five times the, the dill unit, right? So lettuce, let's make this five times okay and the total was correct because we weighed everything after we added the lettuce so you can definitely extrapolate how much lettuce we use by just cutting these up right one unit the amount we did approximately and for sure you could figure out what the lettuce unit was but let's say we used five units of lettuce okay and the total weight of the greens was 400 grams or seven cups so 400 grams, 400 grams, 400 G or seven cups, okay, total, green total, okay. This is really what we need because what you can do is Eliminate whatever you want to eliminate, increase, decrease, whatever you want, right? This is just the ratio I ended up making for this cook. Okay. Now, what else do we have? We had, we had 1.25 cups of flour. We had a quarter teaspoon baking soda and we had eight medium sized eggs. So we had. 1.25 cups flour oops flour we had a quarter teaspoon baking soda and we had eight medium eggs eight medium eggs and we had two teaspoons of salt okay basically sea salt i was using the himalayan pink salt but sea salt i'm transferring into slowly right uh, i love sea salt sea salt flavor i really like right so two teaspoons 
salt and I didn't add any peppers but almost everybody adds black peppers in there okay right now I'm sort of staying away from black peppers that's why I didn't add black peppers but I've cooked with black peppers a lot so black peppers is definitely something you can add to the cook to the cuckoo when you're mixing it all up right and I think that's everything right and of course we you know the the procedure is what we did in the stream which is we basically oil up the pans get them hot enough that when you put the everything mixed together in there it sizzles right put the lid on it on the first when you're uh, when you put the cuckoo in there put the lid on it right when you're cooking the first side right and then once you can flip the cuckoo properly when once you lift it up and it grabs the surround right it doesn't break what you do you cut it into quarters or you cut it into eight pieces flip them and then let them cook without the lid right how come you're boycotting black pepper don't like oh I love the flavor of black pepper but I oh with certain types of food I tend to overdo it a little bit that's why I'm staying away to a certain degree with nuts because I was eating way too much nuts and my body sort of says uh, stop that Chicho <laughs> you're eating too much nuts or you're eating too much black pepper and stuff like this so right now I went a little too crazy with uh, spicy food so my body said okay Chicho you need a break for a little while with spicy food and that's the way that's the way it is with me uh, if I like something I tend to do it do it do it do it overdo it and that's why one reason I have Bill Hicks breaks in my life because what I end up doing is I consider this to be a Bill Hicks break for me of peppers because I overdid it a little bit and it's time to chill and experiment with other things a little bit other than black peppers or nuts or whatever it is right so it's just a way with me but I love the flavor I love the flavor of peppers right I think we got everything I think so right and the procedures in this stream okay and we made two dishes and we had a delicious fantastic sandwich that I'm probably gonna munch on while well I'm gonna no I'm probably gonna put this in the fridge and eat it later and these things keep very well in the fridge you just got to make sure you wrap it or put it in a container so oxygen doesn't make the bread all crumbly right but since I got the cuckoo and the yogurt sitting there with the rice I think I'm gonna munch on that and um, I think that's about it and this is the rice dish of course again right sweet rice dish which is very easy to make sometimes I just make this and for my lunch or dinner this would be it because it's such a it makes you feel so good this rice dish All right crab apples or pomegranates in season yet pomegranates just season just came to an end crab apples is not gonna happen until fall so crab apple no crab apple right now and no palm well there are some pomegranates out there but this is a tail end of pomegranates so um, they're not the best pomegranates it was a fantastic pomegranate season this year in my area anyway we went ballistic with pomegranates we had so many pomegranates this year it was really good seriously it was fantastic we definitely had our fill of pomegranates for this year so we're okay with holding on until next year do you only cook vegetarian dishes no no someone asked this earlier I do cook meat dishes as well and I will show you guys that at some point um, and the meat I usually cook with is lamb I like lamb because you don't need very much to give the flavor and it's it's uh, as far as I know it's got less uh, uh, chemicals and stuff in lamb it requires less energy uh, to raise lamb uh, from what I understand I've I looked into a little bit but uh, I haven't digged down too deep into it yet okay um, so that's about it guys uh, these are the two dishes two huge dishes that huge part of a routine uh, actually three I guess with the sandwich and what we're gonna do is slowly I think with these cooks I'm gonna slowly go through the menu that we had for the farmers market we did uh, a few years ago over a decade ago now I guess I can't remember right and slowly I'll introduce some of the other dishes that we you know that is part of our repertoire um, that have found their way to me from the family or some of the stuff that I've come up with myself 
uh, the cookies was something that I just made up myself and I fine-tuned the recipes and we just made the cookies again like three days ago <laughs> I just took them down in two days we couldn't help it so I don't make cookies I've reduced the the frequency at which I make cookies because we're munching those things down super fast super fast okay uh, I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you had a good time uh, I hope you got some ideas as to different types of cooks uh, different things you can experiment with if you want if you like greens this is this cuckoo recipe is absolutely fantastic fantastic and uh, what are we gonna do we're gonna do a live stream tomorrow right tomorrow's live stream it's mathematics and what are we gonna do we are doing tomorrow's live stream we what time is it let's do some math let me click on this tomorrow's live stream starts at 3 30 p.m. my time Pacific time okay so mathematics tomorrow if you feel like it uh, pop by 3 30 p.m. okay aside from that I hope you guys have a fantastic day thank you for popping by and uh, happy eating right hope you're enjoying some delicious meals right now or soon to come right that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.